Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Genesis chapter 37, beginning in verse 3. It says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Let's we'll skip on down to verse 19. And it says, And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, cast him into some pit, and we will say, some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass, when Joseph was coming to his brethren, that they stripped Joseph of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him, and they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes, and they looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Then were they were passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his Brother Tim, would you just say a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we are so very grateful for the privilege to hear your word. We thank you, Lord, for this congregation that has presented itself. God, I'm praying that you would anoint us all together as you anoint our pastor greatly to minister your precious word to us. God, let our hearts be anointed to receive. Let the seed that is sown fall on fertile ground. Let it grow up useful in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Everyone say amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor of the word of God. How many of you ever had a problem in your life? Yeah. <laughs> Just that few? Yeah. <laughs> We've all been in problems and been in trouble. Anybody ever been in trouble before? Yeah. Anybody ever had yeah. something really, really that, that, that got you down? Yeah. yeah. I got 99 of them. 99. I think I got about six no, I'm, <laughs> I'm only joking, okay? Are you really though? <laughs> Sometimes when we get in those situations, it may feel like we're in a pit. Right. You may have felt like you were in a pit. Yeah. Looking up. You had to, what was it, my, my dad, and I've heard other people say, had to look up to see down. You ever been like that? Anybody ever been there? Yes. Uh, some of us are here right now. Yeah. Amen. 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 And when you read the story of Joseph, there are some things that really cannot be denied because the scripture uh, makes it clear. Joseph was chosen by God. Yes. Joseph was anointed by God. Right. Joseph had a destiny that was given to him by God. Yes. Joseph was favored by God. Joseph was favored by his earthly father. Right? right? right. God yes. was with Joseph. Yes, amen. Sounds pretty good. It sounds kind of like a, Joseph had everything going. Yes. Kind of a winning combination there. If you uh, really kind of looks like maybe Joseph was living the life of Riley. He's got everything uh, in his corner. And you 
would really expect to read the book of Joseph in lifestyles of the rich and famous by Joseph because he had everything going for him. But when we read the Bible, we find out that this same Joseph who had everything going for him, who was anointed by God, who was favored by God, who was favored by his earthly father, who had so many advantages and, and wonderful things going in his favor, one day found himself in a pit. I'll stop right here and tell you something. If you became a Christian and some preacher shook your hand and told you that you were never going to hurt again, that you were never going to cry again, that you would never suffer loss again, that individual lied to you. Amen. Right. Psalm 34, 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord you, delivereth him out Amen. of them Jesus, thank all. Thank the point that I'm trying to make is that Christians have problems too. Christians get sick. Christians get in debt. Christians get divorced. Christians get their hearts broken. Christians get into places and situations they shouldn't be. Sometimes you may fall in. Sometimes you may jump in. In other words, it's our own fault. Sometimes you may have been pushed in. But regardless of how you got there or why you are there, a pit is a pit. It doesn't matter in the long scheme of things of how you ended up in your situation that you're in. A pit is a pit, and if you stay there, you will die. Right. Let me tell you something. Dreams die in the pit. Right. Ministries die in the pit. Right. Gifts die in the pit. Calling die in the pit. Marriages die in the pit. You got to come out of it. Right. Reuben was responsible for Joseph Pitt. It was his name, Reuben, that suggested they throw Joseph in the pit. We don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to Reuben, but somewhere along the way, Brother Tim, Reuben wasn't there. He was there when they threw him in the pit, but he wasn't there when they took him out of the pit. He was surprised. He was shocked when he went back and saw that Joseph was out of the pit. He didn't see him there. He saw him struggling and begging to be delivered from the, from the pit. But now, Reuben looks into that same pit, expecting to see pitiful Joseph full of fear and confusion and stressing and crying and begging, but Joseph wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Some of you here today, you might be going through some things. Right. You might have walked into this building today and struggling in your spirit. You're in a pit. Right. There are some people that may have even helped you to put you in that pit. And they watched you struggling and pushing and scratching and clawing and trying to climb your way out. But I came to this pulpit today to tell somebody you are coming out of that pit. Oh no, somebody's not hearing me right now. I'm standing here today declaring it. I'm speaking a prophetic word from God. You're coming out of that. I wish somebody would have the faith right now to say, Lord, I'm coming out. I don't know where your pit is. I don't know what it, what it is. It may be a pit of death. It may be a pit of sickness or bondage or addiction or despair or depression. It may be a pit of marriage problems. It may be a spiritual pit that you're in. But you don't have to feel like you're just, things to get used to everything. You don't have to feel like you just get used to it. You're dry and discouraged. I want you to know you can come out of that pit today. Pits come in all different shapes and sizes. Oh, yeah. I don't know what your pit is. Because they come in all kinds of different things. Come on, they look like a lot of stuff. Oh, God. You might be in a pit of despair right now. Oh, God, yes. Looking up saying, I don't know what I'm going to do. Come on, come on. I don't know where I'm going to go. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to get out. I wish somebody would come by and help me out of this thing. I know. Oh, Lord, I wish somebody would get some faith right now. 
and say, I've spent my last night in the pit. The word of God says that weeping may endure for the night, but joy, come on, I said joy, coming in the morning. Church, I feel this strong right now. I feel this strong right now. There are some people that thought they knew you pretty good. They thought they knew where to look for you. They even may have talked about your pitiful condition and situation you're in. But I want you to, by faith, tell them that was yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday, it looked like I was in a pit. It looked like I was going to die in that pit. Yesterday, I felt like I was going to die. But I heard a word from Almighty God. I'm coming out of that pit. Don't die in that pit. Come on, don't die in that pit. Don't quit dreaming. Don't quit believing. Don't quit trusting God. Don't quit expecting Him. Tell the devil I'm coming out of this pit. In the name of Jesus. It looked like Joseph was going to die in the pit. Different circumstances are just a matter. I don't know if the Bible is. I didn't really see where it said exactly how long. It may have been a few minutes. It may have been a few hours. But in just a short period of time, Joseph was out of the pit and on solid ground. My God is a God of the turnaround. I don't know how he's going to do it. I can't tell you how he's going to do it. He has surprised me time and time and time and time again, Brother Paul. Ways that I thought, well, he's going to do it this way, he's going to do it that way. You know what? He found a completely different way. He invented a different way to do it. I don't know how. I don't know exactly when he's going to do it. But I'm telling you right now, my God is a God of turnarounds. If you learn anything in the Word of God, you have to know that he is the God of turnarounds. Look at Joseph and Job and Daniel and the three Hebrew children and Jonah. He's a God of turnarounds. From Genesis to Revelation, he's been turning situations around. From the beginning of time, from day one, he's been turning situations around and turning lives around. He's a God of turnarounds. You know what? If you're not convinced yet that he's the God of the turnaround, when you get home this afternoon, walk into your bathroom and look in the mirror. Come on. Yeah. Because some of you, some of you have been pushers. Some of you have been thieves and liars. Come on. Come on. Right? Oh, yeah. Some of you were adulterers and fornicators. Some of you were alcoholics and addicts. But look at you today. Go look in the mirror right now. If he's not the God of the turnaround, you can go on. He's the God of the turnaround. He specializes in it. Guess what? That was the old man. Today, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Turn to somebody and tell them I've had a turnaround. I've had a turnaround. 
Yes, sir. Whoa! 
situation that you're in. You went out of that pit that you're in. You went out of that darkness and that despair and everything else that's going wrong in your life. Learn how to praise. Praise will get you out of any situation that you've gotten yourself into. Praise will get you out of any situation that somebody else put you into. Praise will get you out of any situation the devil is trying to get you into. Praise will get you out of the pit. Praise will get you out of sickness. Praise will get you out of disease. Praise will bring the victory. Praise will open doors for you. Praise will break down walls for you. Somebody hear me now. Praise will defeat giants in your life. It's praise. Somebody accept it right now. Come on. Praise doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be pretty to be powerful. Start where you are. Anybody can put on a pretty praise. Right? When the battle's over, it's all in the rearview mirror, Brother Ball. You put on a pretty praise. We can put on a pretty praise. When the sickness is over, we can put on a pretty praise. Anybody can praise God when the marriage is restored and the family is mended. When you've got a good retirement, money in your wallet, money in the bank, anybody can praise God. Then. But I'm telling you something. It takes something to shout in the face of the devil. It takes something special to praise in the face of the doctor's report. <laughs> it, it takes something to shout when you don't have two nickels to rub together. It's a different story to shout when the doctor says cancer, brother Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's a different story to lay in a hospital bed with your hands raised, praising it. Come on. <laughs> It takes something special. It takes something special when you're going through the fire to lift your voice and say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The point is, don't wait till the battle's over. Brother Paul, don't wait till the battle's over. Shout now. Praise him now. Lift him up now. Start in the dark with the walls closing in on you. Start when you're laying in that hospital bed. Start when you're at the bottom of the pit. Start when you're in the middle of your pain. Start when you're in your inner prison at midnight with your head and feet shackled. Start praising him now. It may not be pretty. In fact, it may be ugly. But give God praise now. Praise 
wait to die. Don't wait. Yeah. 
Sometimes we've got the mindset that, oh, well, I really wasn't feeling it today. About your feelings, honey. No. Right? Worthy. Man, I just didn't feel it. Worthy. I don't know what was going on in that church. Worthy. I just didn't feel it. Worthy. We're tired. We had the stew stay up when it was up till 2 30 in the morning. Got up at 2 30, worked all day, didn't get in bed until about 8 30, something like that. Last night. I'm tired. I don't really feel like it today. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll just preach a fluffy message for everybody and not work too hard today. I think I'll just not, not praise too much. I'm just not feeling it. You know, it's just... No, no. I wonder if those thoughts went through his mind on his way to Calvary. <laughs> Those people are nothing but scoundrels. I'm really not feeling like dying for them today. <laughs> he wants your praise whether you feel it or not. Whether, you, whether you're tired or not. Whether you're worn out or not. choose my praise. 
I can choose the weapon of praise. You see, the devil's purpose for the pit is to kill your praise. He hates your praise. He knows if you ever get your praise on that he's in trouble. See, we have to learn if we can get our praise on, we can get the devil off. Uh, <laughs> I've heard it, Brother Ball, I know you have in years of ministry. People walk into the church, well, the devil's been on my heels all week long. Well, praise him! Right. Not the devil, God. <laughs> I got y'all for saying it, didn't I? Make sure y'all paying attention to me. <laughs> if he's been on your toes and on your heels all week long, give God praise. You want the devil off of you? You want him off your tail? You want... Give God the praise. Joseph wasn't the only man that found himself in a pit. Psalm 40 and 20. David said, he brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet on a rock and established my goings. Jeremiah the prophet found himself in a horrible pit. Jeremiah 38 and 12. And Abedmelech the Ethiopian said to Jeremiah, Put now these old cast clouts and rotten rags under thine armholes, under the cords. And Jeremiah did so. They were going to bring Jeremiah out of a pit. So they offered Jeremiah, God's man, the prophet of God, the mighty man of faith and power, old, thrown out, filthy, rotten, stinking rags. And he put them under his arms and they lifted him out. I believe that the reason some of us hadn't gotten out of our pit yet is we may have too much pride. I wish I had some glasses right now. I look like that. We may have too much pride in our life. We want to praise God on our terms. We want to praise God when something big happens. We want to praise God when I feel like it. We want to praise Him when it makes sense to praise Him. We want to praise God moderately and conveniently and sometimes quietly. Our pride keeps us bound. Our pride is keeping us in the pit. And our pride is keeping us from our miracle. I came to tell somebody today that your praise may look like old, dirty, rotten, stinking rags to you. It may look sometimes extravagant or extreme. It may be emotional or loud. It may even be offensive at times. But some may even go as far as to call it ugly. But that's all right if it's an ugly praise. Because it's an ugly praise that brought Joseph out. praise that brought Paul and Silas out of their prison. That wasn't a pretty thing. It wasn't convenient for them. It wasn't easy for them. But they praised him anyway and he got them out. wholeheartedly that my God will use an ugly praise to get you out of your pit. He'll use an ugly praise to turn your situation around. Lord God, I wish I had some people in here that still had some old rags hanging around in your closet. Some old rags of praise that maybe were ugly for the ball. Maybe you hadn't put them on in a long time. They hadn't been washed. They're ripped and torn and shredded and stinking and filthy. I wish somebody would just take those old rags of praise and put them underneath your arms because I know that God is getting ready to pull you out of that pit. Don't throw away those old rags of praise. Jeremiah would tell you, don't throw away those old rags. Don't throw away 
idols on rags, God will use them to get you out. David would tell you, don't throw away those old rags. God will use them to get you out. Somebody ain't coming. After many years of the ark of God being absent from Israel, David the king finally brings it home. The ark symbolizing the presence, the guidance, the protection, the favor of God to his people. David was so excited about bringing the ark back. He was so excited about it, Brother Greg. He was overcome with joy and happiness. Finally, the presence of God was coming back. The Bible says that he danced before the Lord with all his might. Brother Bruce, he danced right out of his kingly apparel. He praised God right out of his clothes. Michael, David's wife, she saw him dancing and she despised him in her heart. In other words, his praise embarrassed her. 2 Samuel 6 and 20 says this, Then David returned to bless his household, and Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of his handmaids of his servants, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered herself. <coughs> Just dripping with sarcasm. What she was saying was, that was shameful. That was embarrassing. That was ugly. And that was humiliating. David could have said, you're right, honey. That was really no way for a king to act. I should have composed myself and been more prim and proper about everything. But that's not what he said. He could have said, I should have behaved myself a little better. I'm sorry, sweetheart, that I embarrassed you. <laughs> but that ain't what he said. This right here is what he said in 2 Samuel 6, 21 and 22. And David said unto Michael, It was before the Lord which chose me before thy father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord, and I will yet be more vile than thus, and will be base in my own sight, and of the maidservants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be shall I be had in honor. Now some of you all are looking at me like now, what does that mean? Well I'm gonna read it to you in another version. It says David answered, I was dancing to honor the Lord, who chose me instead of your father and his family to make me the leader of Israel, of his people Israel. And I will go on dancing to honor the Lord and will disgrace myself even more. He said, you may think I'm nothing, but those women, those handmaidens that you're talking about will think highly of me. I'm paraphrasing here, but this is what he said. If you thought that was embarrassing, <laughs> if you thought that was shameful, if you thought that was ugly, you ain't seen nothing yet. David was saying, if you didn't like my last praise, if you thought my last praise was over the top, if you thought my last praise was embarrassing, if you thought my last praise was ugly, you ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Hey. I wish somebody in this building 
would make up in your mind today. This is the day I'm coming out of this pit that Satan has dragged me in. This is the day I'm going to praise my way out of it. I wish somebody would say, if you thought my last praise was something, wait till you see me in just a minute. Because I'm about to praise my way out of this situation. I wish some of us would quit worrying about what everybody else thinks and just give God the best praise we have. Your praise may not look like my praise. Right? Your praise may not be rolling on the floor. Your praise may not be running the aisle. Your praise may not be jumping and dancing. Your praise might just be singing of the God. It might be lifting your I don't know what your praise is. I don't want you to dress it up. I don't want you to pretty it up. I don't want you to tidy it up. What I want you to do is just give it up. Give him your ugly praise. It may look like somebody else. It may sound like something else. But when the time comes and it reaches the ears of God, it'll sound like angels singing. Joseph come out of it. If 
Jesus came. 